morning and welcome to our time together uh, at St. Olaf Church. Lovely to have you with us. Wherever it is that you may be uh, listening, I really hope you have a, a great day today. And as we travel around a little bit more freely now and things open up and let's pray that life will slowly get back to normal and our economy will recover and people can get back to work. But today is a special day that God has set aside when we think about Him and reflect on Him. And we're going to do that in a moment, but just before we do so, uh, please pray for Rita Singaram. She's in Interbeni Hospital. She had a fall and they're doing tests to work out what the matter is. And then um, regarding our market at St. Olive's, which is very much a feature of our uh, community life there in the Musgrave area, we are hoping on Saturday, the 19th of September, to have an outdoor market in the car park. Uh, we won't do the usual sit-down meals in the fellowship center for obvious uh, reasons and social distancing and so on, but the plan is to have an outdoor market Saturday, 19th September. A lot of um, stuff has come in, and thank you to all who've brought it, and we've just finished clearing out John Holland's house uh, so there's lots of new stuff there, and uh, I'm sure we can organize some takeaway coffee as well. So that's something to look forward to, Saturday, 19 Sept September. Now, today, as I was saying, we think about God, and we think about His Word. And in coping with the COVID, I want to speak about listening to God. And then next week, God willing, I want to start a new um, little series about stories of God's provision and how God has provided for people in the Bible. But today it's about listening to God and I'm reading from 2 Timothy chapter 2 and from verse 10. You however know about my teaching, my way of life, my purpose, faith, patience, love, endurance, persecutions, sufferings, what kinds of things happened to me in Antioch, Iconium and Lystra, the persecutions I endured, yet the Lord rescued me from all of them. In fact, everyone who wants to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will be persecuted, while evildoers and impostors will go from bad to worse, deceiving and being deceived. But as for you, continue in what you have learned and have become convinced of, because you know those from whom you learned it, and how from infancy you have known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. All Scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness, so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. If ever there's a time when we need to know what God is saying, then surely it is now. People are desperate. And in their desperation, they will be tempted to listen to the myriad of voices that are clamoring for their attention and offering often, sadly, false information, wrong directions, and therefore leading to false hope. Paul reminds us in this passage that there is only one place where you can find what we need, uh, which is right information about God. And that is in the Bible. And he says to Timothy, and he says to you and to me, stick to it. And stick with it. Don't be sidetracked from it. Or as he says in verse 14, but as for you, continue in what you have learned and have become convinced of because you know those from whom you learned it. Now Timothy, like Paul, hadn't actually seen Jesus. I mean, Paul saw Jesus in a vision, but he hadn't walked with him in the way the other, 12, other 11 disciples, 12 disciples did. But Paul and Timothy had met up and spoken with the other disciples, who of course were eyewitnesses to the life and ministry of Jesus. And for us today, that information is in the New Testament Gospel records. Timothy's second source of information about Jesus and the Gospel is in the Holy Scriptures, in other words, in the Old Testament, or as it, as it says in verse 15, and how from infancy you have known the Holy Scriptures which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Jesus Christ. So Paul is saying that God has communicated to us by sending Jesus into our world. Our two sources of information about him are the Old Testament and the New Testament, which make up the Bible. 
some at that time and sadly in our time as well, are getting sidetracked from that. But Paul urges Timothy and us to stick to the Bible because God has spoken to us through the Bible. The second point this morning is that God doesn't change his mind. Verse 16 says that God breathed out the scriptures. And that phrase, God breathed, is a picture to explain how the Bible came into being. And the picture here is that God breathed out his words through the human authors, who were writers, of course, of the Bible, and they wrote under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. And that means that every time we read the Bible, what we are reading is 100% the words of God, because they were God-breathed. Now, of course, they are written by human authors, and the style and the personality of the author shows through the different books of the Bible. So the way that Paul writes and expresses himself as a very learned man is different to the way that Peter writes, who was more of a working man and, uh, and a fisherman. But nevertheless, what they are saying, the message that they are conveying is the same. Overall, the message remains the same. And in a mysterious way, which we don't fully understand, the Holy Spirit controlled and superintended the process of the writing of the Bible. And the result is this, that whenever this book is opened, it is God speaking. It is the voice of God speaking to us. These are the words of God speaking into our life every time we read them. And that's why the Bible speaks to every human being. It doesn't matter which culture or language someone may belong to. We sinners are essentially the same and we need desperately a message from God. And so the question is often asked, isn't the Bible out of date? The answer is no, because God hasn't changed. And His will and standards and precepts for human life and living haven't changed. And our sinful rebelliousness against His will, that hasn't changed either, sadly. And the work of the Holy Spirit by which our sinful natures can be changed, that also hasn't changed. And the future certainties of judgment, heaven, hell, these realities haven't changed either. The way of salvation, the way by which you and I can be saved, that also hasn't changed. So no, the Bible is not out of date. Here's another question that is often asked. Is the Bible sufficient? Is it enough? Has God said everything we need to know? Some people say or think, I just wish God would tell me what to do. Now, of course, you're looking vain when you read through the Bible or through any Bible concordance. Uh, if, for example, your name is Joe Bloggs, you're looking vain for the, for the verse that says this. Joe Bloggs, to do biology at Bloemfontein, and then work for Bidvest, and then marry Belinda, and then move to Birmingham, or Burgersdorp, or even Blickiesdorp. You're not going to find a verse, of course, with that kind of direct information. So has God said enough, or has he just left us in the lurch in large areas of life? The answer is this. He's told us everything we need to know. And there are two very important things that we need to know. Number one, the most important thing we need to know is how to be saved, how to get right with God, how to come back into right relationship with God, how Jesus can forgive us and bring us, as I say, back into right relationship with God, which lasts through death and on into heaven. Or as verse 15 puts it, the Holy Scriptures are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Jesus Christ. The second most important thing that we need to know is then, having come to faith in Christ, how to live in response to being saved. And verse 16 tells us that the Bible says enough when it comes to teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness. In other words, it tells us what is right and what is wrong. It lays down principles and precepts which we then use and apply to our lives in the various and different situations that God has put us. So let's put it like this. It's as if 
on a football pitch or a rugby pitch, rugby field, that God has marked out for us the boundaries of the pitch or the field on which life is to be played. It draws the lines between what is right and what is wrong, between what is sin and what is not sin, what is permissible. But let's go back to the Joe Bloggs dilemma. What about biology and Bidvest and Bloemfontein and Belinda or Barbara? Does God tell us exactly how and where on the pitch to play? Does he tell us whether to be a goalkeeper or a midfield player or a center forward? And the answer is no. Although he may well lead us in certain directions, of course, and he does. But he's given us scope. He doesn't treat us like robots or like radio controlled uh, cars. Which reminds me of a story about my son Stephen when he was about 10 years old and we were living up in Johannesburg and Stephen saved up his pocket money and he went off to the toy exchange which was in Gordon Road just down the road from where we lived at that time and he bought himself a radio controlled car it cost about 30 rand he used up all of his savings and pocket money in the process and then he discovered that you also need some batteries that work as well so that was another i don't know 15 or 20 rand so i relented and once we got it working i enjoyed it as much as he did you push a button a button and it does this car does exactly what you want it to do it goes left it goes right it goes center now my point is this god isn't like that god doesn't control us in the same way the ground rules the parameters the boundaries are clearly given in the bible but he then treats us as a loving heavenly father uh, he treats us as children he says enough but he then leaves us to make our own decisions so for example take the matter of belinda or Bill, if you're a woman. Should you marry her or him? Well, the Bible draws the lines very clearly. I'm only to marry a person of the opposite sex. They must not be a close relative. They must be unmarried. Uh, apart from that, the Bible gives a large amount of what it calls wisdom so that we can make our best or wisest decision that is available to us. That's what wisest or best decisions are all about. So whether you work for Bidvest or Boardman's or BMW or Bill Gates, none of this is morally wrong, although I'd be a little bit careful with Bill Gates. Pray, ask advice, look at the circumstances, and then make a decision. Now, finally, as we finish today, how do we listen to the voice of God in the Bible? Obviously, the first thing is that we need to read it, and we need to read it on a regular basis, and we need to know the contents of the Bible. It's very important. Many Christians have found it helpful to have a regular time of the day on their own when they read a part of the Bible, and then they think about it, meditate upon it, how it applies to their life, and then they pray in the light of what they have read. Many, including myself, have found, uh, found help in understanding different parts of the Bible by using uh, a set of Bible reading notes. And there are many of those that are available. And by the way, God loves us just as much on the, on the day when we don't read the Bible than he does on the day that you do do it. But it is a very good thing to do it as regularly as possible. And then, of course, we have to be active in working out and living out how God wants me to respond to what I've been reading. He's always wanting me to change so as to better conform to the way that he thinks and the way that he is. He's always wanting me to be transformed more and more into the likeness of Christ. So God has spoken in the Bible. God is saying today what he has always been saying because God never changes and what he is saying is this rely on my son Jesus and let me change you by my Holy Spirit so let's pray together 
and thank you so much for joining me. Let's pray together. I'm using a prayer from uh, Nikki Gumbel. Lord, we thank you for your word, the Bible. Thank you that we live in a country where we can openly and freely read it, and we have many resources available to us to help us to do so. And above all, we pray that by your Holy Spirit, that you will speak to us, speak to me each day as I read it. And so, Lord, we pray along with the psalmist, open my eyes that I may see wonderful things in your law. Amen, and God bless you.